everyone, today's video. Let's introduce the use of ESP-IDF for ESP3 to S3 development board program development. First, let's take a look at. This time we use a 4.3 inch touchscreen with an ESP3 to S3 development board. The screen resolution of this development board is 480 asterisk 800. This development board screen should be considered medium to large for ESP3 to S3 development. If used in a production environment, it is recommended that you use ESP-IDF development because the programs developed by ESP-IDF are more efficient and stable. Especially for screen display, ESP-IDF is the best choice because the third-party drivers used in Arduino or platform iOS or some display program. Screen distortion and drift may occur on ESP3 to S3. Using ESP-IDF is the best choice. Next, we open ESP-IDF. We use Versus code to show you ESP-IDF. First, if you don't have Versus code installed, you need to install Versus code first. Then after the installation is completed, in the Versus code extension, that is, the extension button next to it, click to search ESPIDF. You can see. Just search for ESPIDF, then open. After opening, I've already installed it here. If you don't have it installed, the button below should be the install button. Click to install. After the installation is completed. In fact, it is a plugin installed by ESPIDF. It is a plugin for ESPIDF on Versus Code. Not a complete ESPIDF. After installing this plugin, below this status bar, there will be an ESPIDF button. Button to open ESPIDF. You can see some of the settings of ESPIDF. First, we need to open the first config ESPIDF. Extension is a setting of its plugin. You can see this loading in the lower right corner. After opening, it is a menu interface. We can choose the first one. Here, the previous ones can be the default. We have already installed. If you don't have ESPIDF installed, just choose a version of ESPIDF. For example, the latest 5.3.1. Then the following address can also be the default. You can also modify it yourself. Then click Install. You can install the complete ESPIDF. Here we have installed. I want to show you. But the entire ESPIDF file is relatively large. It takes a little time to install. Of course, you can choose according to your location to select a different server for installation. After the installation is completed, we can use ESPIDF for development. First, after the installation is completed, you can see the plugin you just installed. A plugin for ESPIDF will be displayed here. ESPIDF Explorer. Then there is a shortcut key for ESPIDF in the status bar. Here we open a related example. An example developed with ESPIDF. It's already opened here. We can see it in the resource manager. This is a project we opened for ESPIDF. It's also a project we did ourselves. First you can see, the above is actually some configuration of best code. We don't need to move it. Then build is the content generated after our entire code is compiled. You can see, we have compiled this file. So there is already a lot of content. This is a HTTPS data. I don't know exactly what it does because the whole file is relatively large. 
Then the main file. The main file directory usually contains some custom codes. Will be placed in the main file. The components of managing are some dependent libraries. These libraries are installed via the network. Generally, some libraries related to screen drivers. Then there is the LVGL library. In addition, we can see this config. This is the configuration file for the entire project. A configuration file related to the hardware. For example, we use the SP3 to S3 for development. Here are some configurations for ESP3 to S3. If we use other development boards for development, you need to modify this file. Then the default file is the SDK config file. This file will be used when compiling. If you use other developments, you need to choose the development board yourself. Select here. First select the UART port. Click to see the UART port. You can see that the development board on the screen goes out for a while because it reads its UART port. Then there is the type of development board. You can see that it is already opened. That is a type of ESP32 to module. Ours is the ESP3 to S3 module selection. Then we upload the code via USB. So just choose the first one. At this time, the entire project is configured. We can compile. We have previously compiled. Now let's click compile again. You can look at its results. Click this wrench. This is to compile. You can see that the build project is displayed. You can see the terminal shows some of the content being compiled. You can see that the compilation speed is still very fast compared to Arduino. The compilation speed is already very fast because the whole process is a compilation process of a C and C++ project. You see there are 1,380 files to compile. When it compiles, let's take a look at the rest of ESPIDF. These contents are some of the contents of this plugin. For example, creating a file, then import the project and some examples. We've already seen the first one is to install the entire version of ESPIDF. Then let's look at the Components Manager. That is to say, components are its dependent libraries. Here we can search for LVGL. Because our project mainly uses LVGL, click to search. The entire search may be faster or slower depending on your internet speed. Then open LVGL here. As you can see, what is shown now is an introduction to LVGL and some related codes. This is also a platform of ESPIDF itself. So you can click on this home configuration. We'll be connected to GitHub. Others, for example, we can install directly. Then the version installed now is 9.20. If you need other versions, you can choose. Click on this and you can see the version of 8. Then the oldest version is 7.11. You can choose the version you need to install. You can see that it changes after selecting. The version installed directly now is 8.4. You can also install it using the command line. Of course, this command line needs to be installed using ESPIDF's PowerShell. Other command line tools may not recognize this command. 
Alternatively, you can also download this development package directly. After installation, the installed content will appear in the management components. This is the installed LVGL. We've installed it before. No more reinstalling here. You can see, this is a complete code of LVGL. Right here. If you need to modify the content of LVGL, you need to make changes here. You can see that our compilation has been completed. The entire compilation is completed. Then prompt to download. When downloading, we can directly click a button on the burning device. This lightning symbol can be burned. Click to see. Now the screen is dark, in a downloading state. Then the terminal also shows that it is downloading. You can see that the download has been successful. Now it shows the downloaded content. This is a very simple login interface of ESP. The entire program is a dynamic display. Then, it's done. It's just such a simple little program. Overall, ESP IDF is more suitable for use as a production tool. Of course, it is difficult to use, requires some learning and experience. But its compilation speed and program execution efficiency are very high. So if you need to produce, used in production environment, it is recommended that you use ESP IDF, performing programming and programming. Okay, this video ends here. Thank you for watching.